Okay, where is Joomla going and how the heck do we get there? Yeah, okay. I'm Mark Dexter, I'm on the PLT, I also coordinate the bug squad and we're sort of the people that uh, actually do the mechanical work of getting f bugs fixed and getting the new features put in. And how do you want to do this? Okay, okay, and Andy Tarr will be talking about some of this. And she's been developing software since 1979. Is that when you were when she was five? She was a child prodigy. But yeah, and and she's we, we've both been around the block a few times here. Okay, so what we're going to talk about first of all, we're going to talk about how we get there because in a lot of ways, at least for me, the process is as or more important than the particular outcomes particularly in an open source community like, like Joomla. And then we're also going to get into some specifics and talk about some things that, that are on the board for version 3.0 and beyond. Okay, so how do we get there? Well, as we, as we all know, we started doing timed releases about uh, almost a year and a half ago now. And do most people think that's been successful, timed releases, time-based releases? Hey, hey, good, good, good. So what that means is we know when we're going to release, we have no idea what we're going to release. Well, okay, so it's, it's the way it goes, you know. Okay. Um, okay, so we already went through this. Now, if there's one thing I want you to remember about this part of the talk, it's this. There are no core developers, okay? Everybody understand what that means? You don't see it as often anymore, but you used to always see on the list, I think the core developers really should do this, or I think the core developers need to really pay attention to this. Well, I mean, the people in this room are probably about as representative of the core, quote, core developers as, as any other group. I mean, we're a volunteer project. Everybody can be a core developer. And to prove the point, is everybody, how many people are familiar with this Graphic. Okay, if you go out to GitHub and you look at one of the projects and you click on graphs up in the upper right hand corner, I can never find it the first time. Uh, and then it's the it's impact, right? I think this is the impact. This shows you oh boy, the colors are terrible up there. Each the key thing here is that each band of color represents a different person during this these are weak time slices. And the, the thickness of the band represents how much code was done, uh, was, was committed uh, by that person. So the key thing here, I think in Michael's talk this morning, he said that there were 51 different uh, developers that had committed to the platform project just in the 12.1 uh, release of, of the platform, which is, I assume, probably maybe a two-month time window or something like that. I did a similar count last, the end of last year, and I think there were 71 different people that had, uh, whose code had gotten into the CMS uh, for version 2.5. So these are, the, these are the core developers. Now, if you're, if you're working on a feature for the CMS, the process is a little different than for the platform. We still are using the feature tracker on Joomla code is still the point of truth for not for the code, but for keeping track of the tracker of the of the features. So if you've got a feature that you want to try to get into uh, a Joomla CMS version, then we need to be able to have one point of truth where we where we know where that feature exists. People know how to get to it, how to test it. It doesn't mean you have to have the patch there. You could just have a link to GitHub or, or however you want to do it. 
but, but we have to have a description of the feature there, how to test it, and then a place for people to test and, and provide comments and feedback and so forth. And then I'm going to hand it over to Andy. So there's one there. There's another one here. Good this luck. Should be fun. Where's the other one? I'm not going to turn around or sit down because it would look really weird. Which one do I have? Is that the one I get? Okay, this is cute. Okay. Oops. All right. We'll try it this way. How's that? Um, okay, so I'm just going to take over on the production working groups. It's the final piece of how we're going to get there um, because I've been kind of pushing these lately, one of the things I've been really trying to do on the PLT is get more people involved in it, really bringing the community into the development work here. And so by using the production working groups, it's, it's a way to kind of organize um, people who have similar interests into a group that can actually get something done and so we can help you make sure that as you start it that you're on the, a track that's likely to end up into the core. Um, and let you know if it looks like it's veering off in some direction that's not going to um, be as likely. And one of the, the, the successful versions of this that we had recently for 2.5 was the Finder Integration Working Group, which brought us the Smart Search. Um, so you can go ahead. And we, we have some permanent working groups that you may be familiar with. Um, the Joomla Bug Squad, of course, is the one that, that handles all the bugs and is responsible for the code once we've gotten to the beta state of any particular release. Um, there's the translation team. There is the, um, the security strike force is another one that is permanently there. Documentation, we're always in need of documentation. And the UX group is the newest one that's a standing group that we created last summer or so just after Chicago. Um, and then we, we also put up um, working groups for specific projects. And um, the Finder integration group was one of those. It got it integrated, and so now its, its job is finished. We are going to, we have set up an update and migration group, which at some point may end up becoming a standing group, but right now is going to be one that we're really looking at to make sure that any updates or migrations that are taking place when we go to the three series, that it's not as painful for you as um, it was or is to go from 1.5 up to the newer releases. And we are also looking at multi-site, um, a new search one, which is to take Finder beyond where it is right now, um, looking at web services, JavaScript is a new one too, now that we're looking at putting jQuery in. Um, how are we going to do that? You know, also looking at possibly what little bits and pieces of stray JavaScript do we have around that maybe needs to get cleaned up and all of that kind of thing. Um, and some of these others are ones that we're looking at. Performance is, is another one for a group of people who might be thinking that, oh my goodness, look at how many cycles it takes to do X, Y, or Z. Let's go and clean that up. Or look at, look at when you try to do a database call, you're going through and you're, you're, you're doing it twice. And let's see if we can clean that up and make it so that the performance is much better. And then the next thing we're going to be talking about here is now that we know how we're going to get there, it's where are we actually going to be going. And what I want to go over is just sort of what the platform is doing. Um, some of the goals and expectations that we have for 3.0 that we're really hoping are going to get in there. Um, and then just some other things that are going on that we've heard rumors about or people are starting to talk about that may or may not be able to make it. So the platform 
2.x goals that they're trying to do this year are they're continuing to decouple the CMS and the platform so that they're, they're fully separate, get things that are just concerning the CMS out of the platform. Um, so we'll pull them into the CMS itself. They're going to be removing um, deprecated APIs. We're going to have to make sure that, you know, when for the, the CMS that anything, um, yeah, um, if there are deprecated APIs that we still need in the, C, the CMS for any reason, you know, then we'll be handling those. The model view controller um, is being restructured within the platform and they're looking at getting in the uni unified content model, the, the UCM that some of you may have heard about um, in there as well. And we're also um, getting Postgres support into the platform. Now, how does it affect the CMS with what's in the platform? What happens first is some of these low-level things need to get into the platform, and those are the building blocks that we can use for the CMS. And if there's anything that perhaps is missing from the platform, we can also have, we also have a place of our own library that we can add things in there. So one example that I'm giving here is, you know, if you're looking at multiple database or any kind of image manipulation, first that um, the, the handling for that needs to go into the platform itself and then after that we can build the application of the components uh, from that based on what's in the platform. So for 3.0 itself, our goal has been that what we want to do is we want it so that 2.5 extensions will be able to run in 3.0 um, with little or no changes. Um, and we're also looking so that 3.0 will release with the update and migration already contained within it so that you're not going to have to go out and look for a third party source um, to find out how you would be doing that. So we'll be using the 12.2 platform, which is due, due out in July, as the basis for the 3.x series. And the CMS will still be using some things um, that you're used to. In other words, I mentioned that the platform was looking at changing the um, MVC, the model view controller, how that was all structured. But we will also be having a, a legacy layer for it. And what this might mean that the 2.5 extension would not work as is in Joomla 3.0, but you'd be able to do a fairly easy change so that it would work in 3.0 and then we would backport what we need to into 2.5 so that that same extension will run in 2.5 as well. So there might be some changes you have to make to work, make it work in 3.0, but we're going to look at backporting everything we need to to 2.5 so that it will continue to run. Okay. And you just heard Kyle's UX improvements and changes that we'll be doing there that may introduce um, some HTML markup changes. So there may be um, things that you'll have to change with that. And we are now looking, of course, you heard of shipping with jQuery as well. But we will continue to have MooTools in the system so you would have options from both of them. Um, and again, as I mentioned, we're going to be removing the deprecated um, methods and classes that are in core. Um, and if there's anything that looks like it's just being deprecated a little soon, we may be able to just continue to have those as well. Um, some of you, who has heard of the, U the UCM that we've been talking about some? Okay. Um, it's been kind of a buzzword we've had around here for the last six months or so. And I know there was some talk that, that maybe in 3.0, hey, we'll be all, everything is going to change to UCM. That's not what's going to be happening. It looks um, like the earliest that UCM will be in the platform would be in 12.2, which is the platform that we're hoping to base 
the series three-point exon. And if that happens, we're still going to continue to have core um, components just like we do right now so that everything is just going to work the same. But the tools would be in, um, in the CMS, they're in the platform that's within the CMS, so that extension developers would be able to start using it and seeing what it's like. And we could start creating new components that could be in there based on that so that when, let's say, 4.0 comes out, then we'll be ready to maybe make some of the changes and redo some of our core components at that point. So some of the other things um, that people are talking about possibly getting ready for this are doing multi-site and some extended search capabilities as well as the performance. Um, one of the things is that if we're going to be getting 3.0 out in September, we want to get the beta out two months before it. And the beta wants to have all of the new features in it that are going to be in 3.0. So that means that we need to have all of the features coded and in by July. So that's not very long from now. Um, one of the things that we are looking at doing is hopefully by the end of this weekend, we will have a branch repository up on GitHub so that if people want to start coding into a 3.0 branch, they will be able to start doing that. Summary. Okay. So basically, just to summarize where it is that we're going is we're, we're looking at trying to do an easy migration, the UX overhaul that, that Kyle was just talking about, um, adding jQuery onto it, doing preparation for the enhanced MVC structure. So that's, again, like the UCM, where we're talking about doing preparation so people would be able to use them, though we wouldn't be actually using them in core. Um, with the MVC, you'd be able to do that. So s some new components would be able to start using it and getting to know uh, and take advantage of that structure. And so basically, how do we get there? And you're the ones who are going to get us there. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is through these production working groups. And what we're going to be doing next is tomorrow morning, we um, have a series of, I believe it's eight working groups that are going to be meeting as part of the Joomla roadmap in the morning. And each one of those people are going to be talking today, um, just a little quick four-minute lightning talk on, um, on their working group. And we'd encourage any of you who have any interest in um, you know, helping create specs, doing coding on it, being there for testing, just curious about what's going on, to come and join us um, for the sessions that you're interested in. And we'll be doing it in a series of three of them, so you'd have the option um, to go to, to, to three sessions. Okay. Um, so next we're going to start the lightning talks, and we'll start with just a minute. I'm sorry? The just a jury should go outside and meet me. I'm sorry, what was it? Go ahead. Um, um, the Joomla, uh, the, the JustCast jury, um, meet me outside now. This one here?
There we go. Should I give everyone a minute, or should I just tell them to go? Okay. Tell me when to start. And here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Robert Jacoby, president of Arc Technology Group and leading the working group on updating and migration. So today we have a problem, a specter that hangs all over the world. It's the specter of updating and migration. There are millions of sites still out there that are needed to go up to the latest versions of Joomla. So we have 1.5 sites everywhere that will fall behind quickly uh, as we start going from 2.5 to 3.0 and all of that. Uh, there are a number of uh, options that are available today. There is just rebuilding everything, which can be fun, but may not always be the most useful thing to do. There is JUpgrade, which I'm sure some of you have used. Hands, anyone who's had the pleasure of using JUpgrade? Who wants to use it again? One hand to use JUpgrade again. <laughs> uh, there's also a commercial product, SP Upgrade. So what we're looking at uh, doing is uh, bringing in core functionality to update and migrate uh, Joomla from 1.5 to 2.5 and then uh, migrations going forward. Uh, the goals are to figure out how to migrate content, how to migrate media, how to handle extensions going forward. Uh, this is a great opportunity to do a lot of work on Joomla uh, that goes directly to helping everyone in the community. So we're looking for designers, developers, and implementers, mostly developers who know how to read tables, databases, and move files around. Uh, we look forward to having people at the uh, work group tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, so that's the update and migration working group. So that's my less than four minutes. Thank you. It's me again. I'm going to be leading a talk or uh, coordinating the group on multi site. So, very quickly, what is multi site? And we had a group last uh, October, I think it was, in New York. And basically, at least for, for this group's definition, multi site is, is the core of it is one set of Joomla programs to deal with that can manage multiple uh, Joomla websites. So, uh, it's right now multi site, I think, is number two or number three on the I uh, rank on the ideas, so it's a very important uh, objective. Here's a picture, nice picture with a set of Joomla program files, and then we have site one with its database, site two with its database, and site three with its database. Obviously, a lot of benefits for this one update of, you know, of the Joomla CMS, one installation of of uh, extensions and so on propagates across sites. So these are some of the benefits. You install extensions once, you update Joomla once. There's a possibility for cross-site management, potentially copying content items and, and uh, potentially creating a staging site, backup, and so on. One proposed design that, that uh, Christoph Demko is, has been working on is the idea of creating a very lightweight platform application that sits outside of the CMS installation and does a, a couple things. It manages uh, the mapping of the URL to different folders for each site, and, it, and then it manages all of the installation and upgrade of the core CMS and of the uh, extensions for the, for all, across all the sites. And then it also serves as potentially a platform where additional functionality could be bolted on to deal with staging sites or to deal with backups or to deal with other other kinds of functionality. It gives a, but it's, it sits outside the the CMS, so it creates a, a, a separate entity to handle those things. And that's just one one possible design uh, that we might look at. And to learn more, come to the multi-site. Uh, working group. I don't know, when is that? I should have looked up when that is. But you can look. Anyway, it's tomorrow morning. 11. 11. 11.30. Who's next?
Unified Elon. Drover just asked any Oscar jewelry people to come see him. So, okay, so you heard a little bit about UCM from Andy, and I want to say that I'm actually giving a, a talk later today about UCM for CMS users, and, and we'll, of course, be having a working group meeting tomorrow. Um, so the first thing is, what is UCM? And I think there is. It's, just, it's three things. It's a set of APIs, it's an idea about data, and it's a chance to reinvent. So the APIs, basically we have, so far, if you go to the eBay SF um, uh, repository in GitHub, you'll see they have four APIs that they've introduced already, but I think it's safe to say there's probably some more coming um, as they're thinking about how about how, they're, how it's working. Hit the enter key. Hit the enter key? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So far. Um, if we, the important, so in terms of what it means to think about data, it means that, first of all, we say it's all content. Basically, anything that's showing up on a rendered page is content, and if we treat it that way, it makes it simpler, lighter, more powerful, and more flexible. Um, that means certain obvious things, like that we don't need five different content type extensions in the CMS. We need one way to handle content in the CMS, one big way. And so all the things we're thinking as, as dip, fundamentally different things, we should be thinking about as one thing. And that means we have one big core content table, and then every extension, what we think of an extension now, has a, its own secondary table, if it needs it. And that has the extras. So that means a lot of great things. Like we don't need to have a separate MVC structure for each one. We can concentrate just on presentation. One big table means unique IDs for all types. That means we don't need to use item ID to get unique URLs anymore. Um, easy buy-in for extension developers into unified content because all you need to do is put every item that you have, you can just basically say your separate tables that you're running now are content, are your sub, su supplemental tables, and just for every item you make, you put one row in this massive content table, you get your unique ID, and you're done. So easy buy-in. Um, things like liking, featuring, hit counting, asset tra tracking are built right into everything. So. What one type has, all types have. Instead of kind of the crazy structure we have now where you can feature um, articles and you can feature contacts, but you can't feature web links, it doesn't really make sense. Everything is all the same, unless you want to have unique things. But certain core functionalities are, are built in and shared across all content types. And I think that's a discussion that we'll have in the working group is, what are the core functionalities that need to be there and what are the special things? Like, we could have an argument about liking, whether liking is a core functionality. But most important, UCM is opportunity for reinvention for the CMS, because it means that 4.0 can be really different. So we can use, so I think, and they told me, you can say what you think, so I think we should use this as a chance to think big for the CMS. We're still using a lot of 2007, ideas in the CMS and actually somewhat older Mambo ideas from the CMS, these things were brilliant when they were done. But today, they're, they're old and they're, and they're not necessary anymore in many cases. So let's ask, how should things work in 2017? Where is the web going to be in 2017? We've used this structure for five years. Let's look forward to the next five years. So there's a lot of important questions that that means we can ask, and we can ask for the first time in a long time. Like, what does this mean, content management? Like, this is a content management system. What, what is that? What is content? What is management? How should navigation work? What should modules be? Um, does, how does Joomla interact with other applications? What will users expect? We should keep what's strong. We should throw out or fix what doesn't work very well, like navigation and 
um, lots of other things like having to the, the option to set to set options in three different places, which is somewhat confusing. Um, uh, put everything up for discussion. We have a lot of core features that we need to talk about, but I think we should go. We should start now. We should be listing out user requirements, functional requirements. We should build a team now. Take the whole 18 months of three three point X to say, let's build something revolutionary for 4.0, and let's get going. Let's be the CMS by the time we're done. Thank you. Uh, so in today's world, web services form a major part. Uh, that's because you have a website and you have so many applications around it that need to talk to your website, uh, like a mobile app or maybe some third party services that need to talk to your site. So in uh, such a scenario, uh, having a web service becomes very important because then otherwise you just end up uh, duplicating the data in so many places, uh, like the mobile app, the Jab mobile app. Uh, the, it's not using the web services, so the updated schedule can't be put into the app. So because of that, uh, uh, the team thought that it will be sorry, it will be good to set up a web services working group, uh, discuss ideas, discuss the way it needs to be implemented, and then go ahead and do it. So uh, there's been already some work going on. Like I made a API uh, two years back. I spoke about it at last year's JAP. Then there's Com API developed by uh, Brian uh, Brian uh, Brian Egerton. So uh, all those efforts really need to be brought together and made sure that we have a, a web service in the framework. So any extension like Joom Social can have an API that would allow it to create users, create activity streams from uh, a mobile app or maybe any source. And then even you can add content, you can add users, you can add anything else from a third party source. So just like Twitter has an API where you can post your tweets, uh, it's very necessary that Joomla has an API where you can push data from uh, third party sources. So the talk, uh, the web service working group talk is going to be at 9 o'clock. I think it's 9 o'clock tomorrow. So I, I'm sure I'll see. I'm sure I'll see a lot of you uh, out there. That's all. Thank you. Did, did you have a? I must have missed it. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Hook that one on somewhere. Is that working? Anybody here? No? Okay. Anybody hear me now? Yeah, good, right. Okay. Um, Joomla search sucks. <laughs> uh, that is the old search, that is. Uh, smart search, on the other hand, is pretty cool. Um, can I have a show of hands of who's currently using Smart Search on a, on a production site, not just playing with it? A few people, not very many. OK. You're in for a treat, I think, if you, if you give it a try. Um, I'd like to be in a position where we can actually remove the old Joomla Search. Um, I think it's an embarrassment, actually, to be quite honest. Um, but before we can do that, we need to turn uh, Smart Search for Joomla 2.5 into Smarter Search for Joomla 3.0. This is the new iPad, incidentally. <laughs> um, 
or maybe it's a Kindle, I'm not sure. <coughs> um, so we've got a search working group uh, that we're just setting up right now, and uh, we need people to help us add new features and fix bugs and do all the usual stuff that uh, we need to do on these things. We also need people particularly who can do uh, translations or who are familiar with other languages uh, and the way in which those are constructed, um, you know, the, the, the syntax and the grammar and so forth within those languages, because that is, is very important when we're trying to build search, that it works in their particular language. Now, we can write code, but we're really not that good at understanding some of these languages. Uh, so we need those sort of people too. Uh, search is actually a lot harder than it looks. On the other hand, it's also a lot more interesting than it looks. And believe me, I wasn't particularly interested in it until I started working on Finder and, still, and, and, and Smart Search. And it actually really is an interesting subject when you get into it. So if you want to learn, first of all, if you want to learn more about how Smart Search currently works, um, I'm going to be doing a talk on it this afternoon. Um, not sure what time, but it's some, sometime this afternoon. And uh, then tomorrow, the search working group will have a meeting um, where we can all sit down together and uh, thrash out some ideas about how we want search to look going forward for 3.0 and even beyond 3.0 to 4.0 and, 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 well, forever, basically. So um, everyone is welcome. And uh, please come and join me and help us uh, de define the future of search in Joomla. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about unit testing in the CMS. Uh, basically what we have right now is nothing. Um, the unit test suite that's there has basically gone untouched since the platform was split off last summer. So we've got a great chance to reinvent the unit test suite. Uh, we've we'll got a session tomorrow at 10.15 to uh, discuss how to go about and accomplish this. Um, basically, the goal is to get all of the tests uh, written for the libraries and the uh, finder code, which is in it of itself a library in the CMS. And we eventually want to get a good uh, unit test structure, get good tests for all of our and uh, just make sure we have better systems in place to test for issues, test for backwards compatibility issues. And uh, we've done a lot of unit testing for the platform over the last year or so. So we have a good base to work with from the platform. It's just a matter of taking that, porting it over to the CMS now and uh, getting the CMS specific classes tested. So again, 10.15 tomorrow morning, we'll be uh, breaking down, going in depth with this. So just to build on uh, what I said earlier, uh, tomorrow we'll, be, we'll have a working group for UX to go over uh, a little bit of, of what I talked about today, but more importantly to actually st strategize and put together a plan of attack. Uh, there's a million UX ideas out there to improve Joomla, so we kind of have to prioritize for what we can actually realistically execute. Uh, July comes up real soon. So if you guys want to join in and give me ideas, help prioritize and help kind of put together our plan of attack uh, with, with the PLT and just with everybody on how to get this done. Come hang out tomorrow. We'll talk about it. All right. So by a show of hands, how many people here were writing serious JavaScript in 2005? All right, how many people are writing serious JavaScript today? Yes, lots more. 
a whole heck of a lot has happened in that time frame since the Joomla project began in the realm of JavaScript. It used to be strictly like a, a special effects kind of approach that everyone took to JavaScript. And now there are technologies like Node.js where you can even run JavaScript in the back end. Um, I don't think we're going to be integrating that necessarily with Joomla. But there are, suffice to say, there are just much better tools out there available for authoring and unit testing and maintaining JavaScript. And Joomla really needs uh, a better approach right now to, to the, versus the way that we do it right now. Um, we have a lot of code where PHP is generating JavaScript and that's really kind of ugly and you're not able to, to unit test that. So that's one thing we might talk about. Um, as everyone else has been saying, uh, we're going to be keeping MooTools in the core and at the same time we are looking at integrating jQuery in, in the core as well so that anyone that wants to use that doesn't have to pull in their own copy of it. They can just use the one that we have in core. So that's something else we'll talk about. And uh, just anything else that we need to bring up about JavaScript uh, we'll do in this working group meeting. So right now, take out your schedule because uh, this is not in the schedule at the moment. If you look uh, for Saturday morning, there's a big blank spot at 9.15. Uh, yeah, it's just red. So in the red room at 9.15, that is when we are going to have the JavaScript working group. So please come out and uh, share your, your opinions and your needs for JavaScript and join me. Okay, you can't hear me. Okay. Test, 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 test. Okay, um, yeah, a few months ago um, I uh, started to think about uh, a problem that I always had when I was uh, creating a component or a module or a plugin, uh, and that is basically in the end, um, I have to create a uh, installable package when I'm uh, when I want to release the whole thing, and um, I wanted to scratch that itch, and um, I created a, a little a command line application based on the um, Joomla platform um, that you can put into your um, development environment. Uh, it's um, controlled by a, a tiny XML file and um, it then collects all the uh, files from um, your extension and creates a, a buildable uh, an installable extension package out of this. Um, it doesn't only work for uh, one component at a time but also for uh, um, multiple components and modules plugins at the same time. Um, the script is 90% uh, ready, the code is already out there on GitHub and um, the idea is, uh, first of all, it's a tool for developers. They uh, don't have to write their own um, thing or and scripts anymore. Instead, they can use uh, this command line application and uh, streamline their development, uh, push out updates uh, very quickly. But it's also um, a starting point for um, more developer tools. Um, I worked on this script together with Nicolas Dionysopoulos uh, from Akiba Backup. <laughs> and um, he, uh, is, um, he told me he is going to provide his uh, Akiba release system, uh, which means um, you don't have to write your own uh, update server anymore, but um, basically you can use the script, create uh, uh, or build the um, installable, installable package, um, put it into Akiba, Akiba release system, and it's already available for your um, for your users. Um, and if, you, if we go one step further, uh, we could even look at Joomla itself um, for, uh, as a, as a um, client for this little tool. Because um, what is Joomla in the end? It's a, it's a bunch of um, extensions, like the framework, the platform is one 
uh, um, extension, uh, all the components, modules, plugins, the site application, um, etc. Um, in the code that, I'm, uh, that is in the repository, uh, there is also an XML file that takes the current Joomla uh, 2.5 and separates it out into uh, all those uh, different extensions. If we uh, would go one step further and now write an installer that uh, takes just those installable packages and um, yeah, installs them as a new Joomla, we would have um, an effective uh, distribution system. And uh, if you want, you can, for example, uh, put in uh, Joomfish or Joom Social um, or uh, Hika Shop or whatever for a, a new distribution, put that up on, on your website and um, yeah, have this uh, as, as a foundation for uh, people so, to start from. Last but not least, um, this would also mean we don't have um, the, the static Joomla CMS anymore, but maybe uh, separate working groups for com content, for com web links or whatever it's called in, in the UCM realm and um, yeah, have separate uh, update cycles for these. This would be a, a possibility um, with this a script in the end and uh, I would be happy if people were interested in this and um, if you want, um, I'm here the rest of the week <laughs> and uh, you can talk to me about this and um, yeah. When? Every time. <laughs> Second. Not yet, no. Um, feel free to contact me. Feel free to, to, to contact me. I'm here and uh, available. Okay. See, I'm coming to a se uh, session in that case. Okay. Okay, that's the, the last of our lightning talks, and we did such a good time, we ended early. So, we're, the next up is a coffee break, so um, if there aren't any questions, why don't we go ahead and bring the coffee now.